Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some of which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. This is Nevermind by Cyclops. Cyclops was a label of Psygnosis, uh, and it was named after one of Imagine's legendary mega games that never got released. Um, Psygnosis was actually born from the ashes of Imagine in about 1985, if you're unfamiliar. So a lot of the same people were involved. So they were, they were keen to sort of acknowledge their past, even if it was sort of a history of failures, if you like. So, um, Nevermind is an unusual puzzle game with a peculiar bit of trivia behind it, actually, um, particularly for Amiga fans. So, in a lot of cases, uh, UK Amiga fans who sent their Amigas off to service centres would find themselves with a copy of this game when their machine came back as sort of compensation that the, um, that the computer had failed. Don't know what the background of that is, but it's apparently something that happened. So yeah, a lot of Amiga players would probably come across this game at some point or another. So it's got usual sort of lovely Cygnosis box. It's not one of those sort of full-size glossy boxes like they did for the actual Cygnosis releases. Cyclops tended to come in these smaller boxes. Um, but on the back, we've got uh, a bit of a breakdown. Are you tired of those tedious shooter maps? Are you sick of dull, uneventful adventure games and excruciatingly boring war games? Do you scream whenever you come across yet another chess program? If so, then never mind is for you. For the more discerning and demanding games player, Cygnosis brings you a refreshingly inventive game that will have you juggling your joystick and agonizing over its mind-muddling problems until the early hours of the morning. So, bold promises indeed. Let's see what we've got inside the box. So, first of all, I've got a <laughs> a small blue piece of paper that says Grrrrg on it. If you can see that there. I guess that's a password for something for a later level that I got onto. Yeah, it looks like my handwriting. Uh, then we've got the floppy disks themselves there. Two disks. And we've got a manual. One aspect of Cygnosis games where they always kind of let themselves down a bit was the manuals. They had these lovely glossy boxes and everything, but then they had absolute crap manuals. Um, but yeah, this does at least tell you uh, how to play the game and so on. And it kind of continues that sort of sneery attitude towards other games in here. So let me just read a bit. So welcome to the most challenging test of joystick juggling and mind muddling ever created on your computer or anybody else's for that matter. 250 screens of isometric three dimensional puzzlement guaranteed to turn all but the most impossibly intelligent brains into vegetables. A combination of computer generated and handcrafted puzzles that would keep you glued to your computer forever. Well, all right, for a very long time then. If you complete this game, you'll be heralded as the brain box of the century. If you don't, well, never mind. And then later on, we have Note for Pinstriped Games Addicts. Cygnosis realized that this game is so unbelievably addictive that even the most conscientious employees will be sorely tempted to play it at work. Tut tut. They have therefore generously provided a boss key. Enter. On detecting the approach of your employer, simply tap this and you will be appear to be engaged in work of such incredible brilliance that you are bound to be promoted on the spot. Cygnosis take no responsibility, however, for unemployment caused by tardiness with said boss key. So uh, I kind of like that. It's a very British sense of humour in there. So sort of lots of lots of unnecessarily big words and so on. Yeah, I remember quite liking this game, but never getting very far with it because it's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, looking forward to trying it again. So let's go play Nevermind. Okay, here we are with Nevermind from Cyclops, um, developed by a company called Lothlorien, who did a couple of other things, including Chucky Egg 2, I think, which was a terrible game. Um, but this is quite good from what I recall. Uh, you're pretty challenging and brain bending, but uh, kind of cool. So, let's see how we get on with this. Cyclops and McLothlorien proudly present Nevermind. Program by S.A. Riding, graphics by Neil Thompson, sound by Tiny and the Spoon, sound images unlimited. It's the advice from Matthew S. Jones, original content by Paul Winder. I don't recognise any of those names, I don't think. Anyway, let's move on. Cracked by the replicants, yes we are indeed playing a pirate copy here, uh, again just for the sake of ease when recording the footage. So. Uh, as you saw in the intro, I do have an original copy of this, though, so. Right. So, um, how does this work? Music on, patient on, I can't remember what patient on means. I think that might be, you can set a lower time limit or something like that. Anyway, let's have a go. 
so the way this game works is um, there is a picture that is wrong somehow and you need to fix it and you do that by walking around in this isometric perspective picking up tiles going through warp panels and grabbing tiles to stick them where they need to go so basically it's um if you ever played atari video cube on the atari 2600 it's basically a kind of variant on that uh, only you're working with pictures rather than colors So you see in each stage you have to figure several things out. So the main thing is figuring out how these different warp tunnels relate to each other. Because they're the only way you can actually get up onto a wall. In order to position things. Let me put that there. That looks right, doesn't it? So... Uh, I also need to find where the hell the other pieces are. Um. No, oh, I guess. I guess it's just that needs to go there. There we go. Okay, so first couple of levels are pretty simple. But you do have quite a tight time limit, you'll notice, denoted by that pie chart up at the top. And then from this point onwards, it starts getting into really irritating territory with moving pictures. Right, so we need to get onto that front panel there to... That's not right. Well, you can just walk up. That's good. So does that mean we can... Yes, it does. There we go. Okay, so that one goes in the bottom left corner, obviously. This one clearly goes up there. That one clearly goes there. And this one obviously goes at the top. No, maybe not. What have I done wrong? There we go. Okay, so moving on. I'm not entirely sure why you have mouse control in this. It always seemed like it was built for joystick control rather than anything else. Yeah, can we... Oh, that's one, isn't it? So that evidently needs to go there. Yeah, then that will go down... No, not down there. This is a game about thinking out loud. <laughs> is that right? It doesn't quite look right. But maybe it is. Right, now we just need to figure out how to get to that one over there. Like that. Right, I think one of those guys is wrong. So maybe... Oh no! There we go. So yeah, a bit of trial and error involved in this game. But um, yeah, some pretty satisfying puzzles as you go along. Alright, and from here you start getting these chess pieces. And these bastards are really irritating because not only do they get in your way, um, but they also pick up pieces themselves. Which is... Jolly annoying, I can tell you now. Right, that 
looks right. So then this one probably goes there. That one goes there. And this one goes there. Easy peasy. So yeah, if you take too long, those chess pieces will then start picking up stuff that you've put in the right place already and swapping them around and generally making life pretty miserable for you. So um, yeah, try not to let that happen. But you don't really have much of a choice because there's no way of attacking them or stopping them. You just have to deal with the consequences of what they're doing, basically. So, see, he's up there on the picture now, so he's probably going to pick something up and move it around. Like a prick. Yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? Um, that doesn't look great. Oh, that's a really hard one to judge. Let's see what these controls do at the side. So H. Oh, H shows you the finished picture. So that's H for hint. That does cost you some of your time, though, from the look of things. And question mark. Oh, that just tells you what the password is for the level so you can get back to this in the future anyway there we go um i think my brain is already too fried to get any further in that than we did there but uh yeah that is never mind that's a pretty cool game that i always quite enjoyed it's got some annoying features like i could do without the chess pieces because they are quite irritating um but as a, a concept for a puzzle game this is a really novel one a really cool one and uh, worth checking out so as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, moegamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese-inspired games from yesterday and today, and videopackgames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well-formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon, or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.